Welcome to Lecture 9, Part C of Financial Statement Analysis. We're going to be looking at the residual operating income model, which is also called the discounted abnormal operating earnings model. The discounted abnormal operating earnings model, also called the residual operating income model, is the fourth valuation model that we're going to learn in this subject. There's obviously room for, for confusion amongst these two models. The residual income model and the residual operating income model have very similar names, just one has the word operating in it, and they operate in very similar ways. The formulas look very similar and the way we specify the model is very similar. We just talked about the residual income model. We said that the residual income model values the firm's equity. So it means in the formula, it started with a value V and a little subscript E for valuing equity. We used the cost of capital for equity in that model, RE. The residual operating income model, this is the new one we're now looking at, values the whole firm. So in the formula, it'll be V with a subscript F, value of the firm, and calculates the firm returns, and it uses the cost of capital for the whole firm. So not the cost of capital for equity, but cost of capital for the firm. And we'll learn more about that in lecture 10 on how to calculate that. They can be reconciled, same as the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. The value of a firm's equity is equal to the value of the assets of the firm minus the value of the debt of the firm. So when we're doing the residual operating income model, we'll actually value the firm, but then if we minus off the debt, net financial obligations, then we get the value of the equity. So the residual operating income model is very similar to the residual income model. The residual operating income model uses NOPAT as our earnings benchmark, and it uses net operating assets as our assets benchmark, which is very similar to the residual income model, which used net income and owner's equity as the uh, benchmarks. So here we're using residual operating income, and it's a function of NOPAT minus the cost of capital for the whole firm times net operating assets from the previous year. This concept is very similar. We are earning a level of NOPAT, our net operating profits after tax for the year, and we're comparing if that is higher or lower than the NOPAT we would have expected to earn given the assets we've invested into the business and the expected return on those assets. So if, we, if our NOPAT is higher than our expected return times our assets, then we've earned an operating income, a re residual operating income or an abnormal operating earnings. Okay. So as we come down to this line down here, the formula for the residual operating income model is here. It says the value of the firm is equal to net operating assets at time period zero, plus we then calculate the residual operating income, NOPAT minus the cost of capital times NOA of the previous year. Then we discount it back. Then in the following year, NOPAT in year two minus the cost of capital for the firm times NOA in the previous year. Discount it back. So on, and then a terminal value, which is also discounted back. So the way we set up this model is very similar to the residual income model, except we're using information from our reformatted financial statements. We're using our operating profit and our operating assets, whereas in the residual income model, the previous section of the lecture, we use the total income and the total net. These two models, they both derive from the dividend discount model. So this dot point here, it says it gives the same result as the residual income model as long as the cost of capital for equity is adjusted each time leverage changes. We're not gonna worry about making sure the two models give us the same valuation yet. In lecture 11, if we've got time, we'll talk about how we can make sure the two models give the same valuation estimate. The steps to implement the residual operating income model, we first get our forecast NOPAT and NOA from our forecast template. We estimate the cost of capital for the firm, so RF. We'll talk about that in lecture 10. We'll use the weighted average cost of capital. We can then calculate the discount factors for each year. Step three, we calculate the residual operating earnings. That is, was our NOPAT, NOPAT higher or lower than our expected return? So the opening NOA, so last year's NOA, times the cost of capital for the firm. That is our expected earnings. Is NOPAT higher than our expected earnings? If it is, we've got an abnormal operating earnings. We calculate the forecast residual operating earnings growth patterns then we can use that to calculate the terminal value. We discount the residual operating earnings and the terminal value, and we also add up the opening net operating assets, and that gives us the value of the firm. This final step, 
This is the key difference. We've now valued the firm, so we have to minus off the book value of debt, which is the net financial obligations from our reformatted financial statements, and that gives us the equity value. Okay, so this little line here, this last bit, less book value of debt, is one of the key areas that you need to be aware of, that this model does something different to the prior residual income model. I'm now going to demonstrate how to implement the residual operating income model using the Gale Pacific example. So step one and step two is about getting the firm's net operating profit after tax, NOPAT, and the firm's net operating assets, NOA, from our reformatted financial statements. So here I'm going to, for 2020, I'm going to get the firm's NOPAT from my forecasts, and I'm going to get my NOA from my firm forecast for 2020. So now I've got those, I can drag them along for my five years that I'm forecasting. Now I need to calculate the residual operating income. This is also called the abnormal operating earnings. The formula for that was that I need to take my NOPAT, the earnings that I've actually generated in the year, and then I'm going to minus off my cost of capital for the firm multiplied by my prior year's NOA. At the start of the year, I had $130,000 in assets and my investors expected to earn 6.5%. So if you multiply 130,000 in assets times the 6.5%, that would give you the expected earnings for the year. So we take NOPAT, our actual earnings, and we minus off the expected earnings, and we find that the company's actually generated a negative, they have not earned a return higher than their cost of capital. So we're gonna now drag that formula across to get our residual operating incomes for each of the five years. And then I'm going to get the discount factors equals one plus cost of capital for the firm this time, not the cost of capital for equity, to the power of the year. And I'm gonna drag that along. And I can now present value each of my residual operating income numbers. Okay, so the next step I need to do is count. So I've calculated my residual operating income for year six. I've taken the year five residual operating income and I've multiplied it by one plus my growth rate. Because I wanted this to go towards zero, I've used a minus growth rate. Now I can actually calculate the terminal value and I'm using my, I'm doing it in year five and I'm using my year six residual operating income and I'm dividing through by the cost of capital for the firm minus the growth rate. This is calculating a perpetuity with growth. So I get my overall uh, present uh, overall terminal value. I then need to calculate the terminal value of that by dividing through by the discount factor. Now I've calculated the residual operating income for each year. I've also forecast my year six residual operating income, which I'm going to use for my terminal value. I've discounted the years one to five residual operating income. I've calculated my terminal value, year six residual operating income divided by cost of capital for the firm minus the growth rate, and I've calculated the present value of my terminal value. I can now calculate the total firm value. That is, I add up my year zero NOA plus all the present valued residual operating incomes plus the present value of the terminal value. That gives me the total value of the firm. I then have to minus off the value of debt, and the value of debt is the net financial obligations from the 2019 year. That gives me the total equity value for the business. I divide through by my number of shares, and I get a price per share of 16.1 cents, which would rate it as a buy because it's currently above the share. Of course, it's not investment advice. These forecasts are not perfectly accurate. We've done them quickly just as an educational tool to illustrate how the residual operating income model is working. Thank you.